In this video I'm going to talk about different drainage options. It's a crucial feature of our installations. Uh, the system's designed to be a flush track installation, as you can see here, and 90% plus of our installations end up looking like this. Uh, you can of course have a step down. The system's always designed to have a flush floor level internally. You can have a step down externally and, and it not be flush, but most people are going for this system to achieve a, a flush track level. So let's explain what's going on here. Water and debris is designed to go into the track, into these drainage holes, and is ejected out underneath the external tile. So that's what's going on underneath there. Water and debris through the track, onto the drainage tray and out here. This is the cleanest way to do it. So you tile straight up to the top of our track. And you can do that by using these tile support pieces that we provide. So the tile goes straight on top of this support piece, still allowing drainage to get out. Underneath there to deal with that water would be a, a, a U-channel or a French drain, a gravel drain, a natural soak away that allows the water to get away, get away because remember it's, it's only the water that gets into the track, it's not huge amounts. Most people will opt to pitch this tile slightly away from the doors so it takes water runoff away from the house rather than to the doors. And then we might see sometimes, this is a really popular ACO slot drain. Uh, this is obviously available in a metal grating as well as this black plastic. That might be situated one tile away from the doors so the, the water runs into that. That's quite a sleek way of doing it. Alternatively, you don't need any visible surface drain at all and the whole patio can run away into a, a drain at the other end of at the other end of the patio. Alternatively, there are systems such as the Aquaboki here, which slot straight in to our door system like that. So the water goes off the drainage tray into the Aquaboki and is carried away as part of the rest of the, the patio drainage system. I'm just going to show you as well how, what's going on on the base. So to achieve a flush track level like this, the top of the concrete or block base that your builder prepares needs to be 85 millimetres below finished tiled level. That guarantees we have a flush track. The reason for that is this dimension here is 75 millimetres and then we have a 10 millimetre gap underneath which we use packing and a cement mortar mix to level and completely solidify the base. That's why we need the 10 mil. This is um, demonstrating the EPDM waterproof tray we also install. So underneath here, underneath this black membrane, is the base prepared by your, you or your builder. We then install this EPDM waterproof tray, which we don't pierce. It wraps all the way up the back of our frame, as you can see here, and these represent the walls at each end. The EPDM wraps up there as well, so it makes it a completely impregnable base. So that's roughly where that would be sitting, this representing the far walls and then the drainage system, if required, uh, could slot, slot onto the front of the, the doors here, or uh, none at all for it to be left like this. One other small thing to mention with finishing the flooring into the track is to always leave an expansion gap of around five millimeters, just to allow for expansion in the tiling so it doesn't impact on the door track. We also say to fill that gap with silicon, not tile grout, because silicon can absorb some of that expansion, whereas grout can't. 